Last time we installed two layers of insulation, XPS and polystyrene, to fit the tricky contours of our ceiling. Today we are diving into how we built our custom shower tray. It's a great video, so don't miss a single detail. Right, okay, so while the ceiling's drying, I'm gonna carry on with the shower tray area. Um, what I'm doing here is creating the, the outside wall of the shower area. Um, we're gonna have we're gonna have a small nib coming from about here all the way up to the ceiling and this part is going to be open um, but I am still putting a sole plate for the wall because I'm going to use this as um, somewhere to put the waterproof and tanking to. Um, you'll see here I've already put a batten. Um, I'm going to be putting another three battens in um, that's going to form the outside edge of a shower tray. So at the moment I've got an 18 millimeter base here and I'm going to be putting 12 millimeters on top um, and, and this is the this is the highest point of the shower tray um, which will be the same height all the way around um, and then what I do is decide whereabouts to drill the hole for the um, for the waste of the shower and obviously that will be the that will be the lowest point for the shower tray and um, so once I once I've uh, marked out that point and cut the hole, I'll create battens with a gradient from the height of this coming down to the waist itself. Um, and then probably what I do to make sure there's no movement on the tray is just fill the rest of the air with a low expansion foam um, before I screw down um, screw down the 12 millimeter ply, which will pull it into the correct shape. So it turns out there's literally no flexibility on this 12 mil ply whatsoever. And I'll show you. There's just no way I'm going to get that to shape down to the drain. Um, so I'm thinking I can probably do it with six millimeter ply and double up on the, on the layers and glue them together, which will create um, you know, a, a strong surface in the end. Um, but before I do that, because I don't want to waste this bit of 12 mil ply, I've already cut the size. I'm going to I'm going to mark out where the drain is going, um, and then I'm going to cut some slices in the bottom of it um, to to a particular depth. Um, and just see if that weakens it enough that I can then push it down to where the drain's going. Right, so I've been looking at where I can drill out the hole for the waste. Um, it's quite difficult at this stage to kind of see where exactly this point is underneath the van. Um, but what I, what I looked at was the, the uh, indicators on the side of the van, um, the, the, the low level indicators that run along the van. And I've measured from the center of those um, to, to what I think is, the, well, what is this point? I've, I've measured internally from the center of that light to where I want to put the waste and I've transferred that on the outside of the van. And I can see, um, I can see that I'm in a nice space where there's enough, enough, enough room for a bit of tolerance, uh, depending on if the hole end, ends up exactly where I want it to. Um, also, there are ribs on the floor of the van that go up and down. Um, I don't think it's realistic that I'm going to get it perfectly on a flat surface. So even if I drill it through a high or a low point, what I'll do is seal it up from the underneath the hole um, and put a metal plate spanning across the ribs to create a flat surface. And then I'll tighten the nut to that. Uh, so I'll have a nice secure fixing there. Before drilling through with a, with a big hole saw, it's always worth just getting a small drill and going through where you want to put the hole um, and then you can just make sure that it's okay. One out of five. The ideal position would be here. That is going to be a little bit close to the toilet. How deep does the toilet get? The uh, mini? So the toilet is 475. Something like that. Time to drill out the hole for the waste. 
대전이에요. 오케이, okay, so good news, I think. Um, I think I may have saved this board, the 12 mil that I said wasn't flexing. I've cut lots and lots of lines underneath it to weaken it at the bottom. Um, and now there is quite a nice bit of movement on it. When I stand on it, it's, um, it's flexing. Before, you'll see that I cut loads of holes in the back of the 12 mil ply. Um, I stood on it and it seemed like it was flexible, but I don't think it's quite flexible enough and uh, it, I, can, I can get it close to where I want it in terms of being low, down at the low point here, um, but it's, it just seems like it's under too much tension. I'm just worried over time that um, I might find that screws start popping up through the ply and things. Um, so what I've decided to do is build it up in two layers of five and a half mil ply uh, because it just has a lot more flexibility. Um, so I've cut another one here. Um, and I've added a few more timbers around here. I've glued, um, I've glued these in position and then, then I'm gonna screw through them and also put glue on top of them as well before I put the ply down. Um, and then once that's all gone off, I'll just add another layer of six mil ply. And yeah, I think that would be a nice solid base. Okay, good news. This, the five and a half mil ply has definitely taken the shape a lot better than the 12 mil with all the cuts in the back. Um, just checking with a level, I've got some really nice falls running into that. You want to aim for some really steep falls uh, because quite often the band won't be sitting perfectly level so you want to overcompensate for that. Um, but I can see that in all directions it's, it's coming in really nicely into the drain and it's gone down flush on top of the timbers that I put there. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with how this has turned out. Um, so now that I've got it, I know that it fits, I'll, I'll take out the screws, lay a load of glue on there, screw it back in and then I think I'll screw the second one straight on top. Well, that glue should have gone off by now, so I can remove these these props and uh, carry on with the boarding. Right, so unfortunately, after all that messing around, um, I drew across my marks in the wrong place and cut straight through the plywood that I was preparing for this gap here. Um, so for the moment, I've just, just pieced it back together um, I'm, I'm gonna have to use a new piece of wood to, to start again. Um, fortunately, I've, I've got this, um, which will speed up the process. I've got this to draw around, which will speed up the process considerably. Uh, just a bit annoying that I'm gonna waste the wood. I just wanna show you a little trick um, when you're dealing with a situation like this. You can see I've got this all scribed nicely now and it's gonna be bol bolted in here. Um, I'm using the original or some of the original bolt holes as you can see here um, and rather than trying to measure them out and transfer the measurements onto the back of the board um, I put in the bolts in the original holes that I'm going to be using um, and what you, what you can do is just put the board on top and just, just hit it where the bolt holes are and you'll see here it just dents the uh, back of the wood so you know where to drill it I saw you